On this most holy night, when the Lord Jesus passed from death to life, the Church invites her children throughout the world to come together in vigil and prayer. This is our Passover feast. If we honour the memory of his death and resurrection by hearing his word and celebrating his mysteries, we can be confident that we will share his victory over death and live with him forever in God. These words that mark the start of the Easter Vigil always send a little bit of a, an excited shiver up my spine. They mark the turning point from Lent to Easter, from darkness to light, from sorrow to joy, from defeat to victory, from death to life. And it's not just a turning point for the church, it's a turning point for the whole world, because Jesus being raised from the dead changes everything. And of course, this turning point is accompanied not just in the church either, by lots of other things. This is the time of year when Thorpe Park reopens, when the weather improves, when people come out of hibernation, when holidays are taken, and when celebrations increase in frequency. However, as we know, this year, not a lot of that is going to be happening. Even the Easter Bunny is struggling to get around. And I sometimes wonder whether we should cancel Easter this year, or at least postpone it to a few months' time. After all, if most of the things that we associate with Easter are not happening, well, what's the point of having it? What's the point of having this celebration? What is there to celebrate? Why bother? Well, 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 let's go back. Let's go back to the very first Easter. Jesus' resurrection and death took place at the time of the Passover. Jesus and his disciples were, were all Jewish, and so that was what they were celebrating at the Last Supper. For the Jewish people, the Passover is when they remember how God rescued them from slavery in Egypt and led them to the Promised Land. So going way, 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 way back to the first Passover, what were the people of Israel doing? Well, they were in, they were in lockdown. They were sheltering in their houses while the angel of death passed over them. And when the lockdown was over, things didn't get any easier for them. They still had this, this journey through the Red Sea and through the desert that, that lasted for, for 40 years. But all the same, on that first Passover, huddled in their houses, that was their turning point. That was the beginning of their journey from death to life, from slavery to freedom. It was a very, very similar thing with the disciples, because they too, following the death of Jesus, were in lockdown, largely a self-imposed lockdown, but they were there in fear. And even when they heard that, that Jesus had risen, they didn't immediately run out of their houses and start sunbathing in Snowdonia. It took them a while to understand what had happened. It took them a while to regain their confidence. It took them a while before they could feel ready to face the world again. Little by little, Jesus visited them and Jesus encouraged them. But all the same, that first Easter, for them, that really was their turning point. That was the beginning of a journey from death to life. And so that brings us now to the present day. And here we are and we're celebrating Easter under a lockdown, just like Jesus' disciples, just like the people of Israel. And just like with them, we too are on the journey from death to life. I can't think of a more appropriate time for us to celebrate Easter than now, when it seems that almost the whole world is united in a single effort to save lives and to protect the most vulnerable. Although we can't do a lot of the stuff that accompanies Easter normally. We can't go on holiday or to garden centres or Thorpe Park. 
there are other signs of our hope in the risen Christ that we can see. For example, the amount of care that people have shown to their neighbours, often neighbours that they've never seen before. The amount of kindness that's been given by strangers. The amount of businesses that have, that have done their best to treat the staff fairly. The amount of companies that have been as generous as, as they can with their customers, even though they're struggling. The amount of individuals that have put themselves in danger of ill health or financial ruin in order to help others. And that's not to mention all of the medical staff. Yes, I know that this isn't a very easy time. And I know that this will go on for quite a while. But the message of Easter is clear. This is our Passover feast. This is our turning point. This is our journey from death to life. This is no longer a lockdown of fear, but it's a lockdown of hope. This is no longer Lent. This is Easter tide.